it means that over a long period of time, what you eat as well as other conditions can cause you your breath and blood to be out of balance. When that happens, sickness arises. Wound honored one, the great assembly has not awakened. He says that no one understood, but did Manjushri Bodhisattva understand? He understood, but he still wanted to ask on behalf of those who had the opportunity to be present in the great assembly. If he had not asked, no one else would have known how to phrase the question. The Buddha could have explained it, but if no one knew how to ask, there would have been no way to take advantage of the Buddha's knowledge. We know that Manjushri understood because the text says that he took pity of the four assemblies. But even if it weren't for that phrase, we would know that he understood because he has the greatest wisdom and is referred to as the greatly wise Manjushri Bodhisattva. His question was asked on behalf of those who have not awakened to the principle of the Thus Commons to fold disclosure of the essence of seeing as being both form and emptiness and as being neither of them. This refers to the doctrine involving the, the seeing essence, things, and emptiness. Ultimately, is the seeing a thing or is it emptiness? Nobody else knew how to ask about this doctrine. So Manjushri Bodhisattva decided to ask about it. Sutra, won't honored one, if the causal form, emptiness, and other phenomena mentioned above were the seeing, there should be an indication of its distance. And if they were not the seeing, there should be nothing visible to be seen. Now, we do not know what is meant, and this is why we are alarmed and concerned. Commentary. Do you see how Manjushri phrases things completely differently from Ananda? Ananda is not clear about what is going on, but when Manjushri Bodhisattva speaks, his reasoning is quite complete. He says, Won't honored one, if these conditions before us, the appearance of form and emptiness alike, were the same, one would be able to point to it. These conditions before us, refers to the dust before one, the causes and conditions discussed above. Form refers to things, emptiness to space. Alike refers to both of these characteristics. And appearance means that there is not necessarily such a thing, but they are used by way of analogy. Manjushri says that if form and emptiness are the same, there would be some representation of it that one could point to the seeing. If they were not the seeing, then one would not see anything. The wound honored one first said that the thing was not a thing. Afterward, he said that thing is a thing. That is, he asked what things are not the, the seeing. Nobody knew what he meant. Now we do not know what is meant. Just what is happening here in the end is there seeing or isn't there. Manjo Sri Bodhisattva says we because he doesn't have a self. He says that everyone does not understand. His question is a lot clearer than any asked by Ananda. You see how simply he states it, yet the meaning is very wonderful. This is why we are alarmed and concerned. This is something we never paid much attention to before, and now that we have taken notice of it, the doctrine is so wonderful that we are not sure what it is ultimately all about. I look at this lamp, for example, is the seeing the lamp or is the lamp the seeing? This doctrine hasn't been explained clearly. If you say the lamp is not the seeing, then I don't see the lamp. You may say the lamp is a seeing, but the lamp itself cannot see. So you say it is a seeing and yet it is not the seeing. Sutra, it is not that our good rules from former lives are deficient. We only hope that the first come one will have the great compassion to reveal exactly what all the things are and what the seeing essence is. We see that there's no question of is or is not in all of this. Commentary, it is not that our good rules from former lives are deficient. 
The reason for our alarm and concern is not that our gurus from all last uh, from our last lives or from other previous lives are deficient. It wasn't that the members of the assembly had few good rules. It was that they didn't understand the doctrine at all. Sometimes people whose good rules are slight will become very afraid when they cultivate the way. What should you do if this happens? Do more good deeds to nourish your good rules. When your good rules are nourished and grow deeper, then you will have samadhi power. If your good rules are insufficient, your samadhi power will be insufficient too. So we all should nourish our good rules. We only hope the first common will have a great compassion to reveal exactly what all the things are and what the thing essence is. Is it that there is no question of is or is not in all of this? In the end, is that is it that there is no is or no is not in the midst of things? Emptiness and the thing essence, Manju Sri Bodhisattva is really clear about this doctrine and so he makes this deduction. Sutra, the Bodhisattva told Manju Sri and the Great Assembly, to the first commands and the great bodhisattvas of the ten directions who dwell in this samadhi, seeing and the conditions of seeing as well as the characteristics of thought are like flowers in space fundamentally not in existent. Commentary The Buddha told Manjushri and the Great Assembly So the first commands and the great bodhisattvas of the ten directions who dwell in this samadhi in the great Suragama Samadhi, seeing and the conditions of seeing, the causes and conditions which arise in their seeing, as well as the characteristics of thought, as well as the things they think about, are like flowers in space, fundamentally non existent. Basically, there aren't any flowers in space. When your eyes are defective, you see them, but if there's nothing wrong with your eyes, there are no there are no flowers in space, or perhaps if you look at the sun for too long, you may see flowers all over empty space. That is one way to explain it. Another way is another way to explain it is that if you open the Buddha eye, whatever flowers you want to look at exist in space. These are flowers in space also. So there are two principles here. Are the flowers seen by those who have opened their Buddha eye real? No, they are not real either. They are also illusory transformations, but if you think you want to see them, they come into being. Then, are there any flowers in space? No, basically there isn't anything at all. Basically, they do not exist. Basically, there isn't anything. What are you trying to find? Why are you trying to find out if the thing is a thing or if it is emptiness or what? What are you looking for? You are all caught up in seeking outside, in running outside yourself to look for things. Sutra, this thing and its conditions are originally the wonderful pure bright substance of body. How can one speak of is and is not? Commentary, the Buddha said, this thing and its conditions are originally the wonderful, pure, bright substance of body. The thing and the conditions of thing are themselves the wonderful, pure, bright substance of your body mind. It is also the pure nature and bright substance of the everlasting true mind. Here, for purposes of literary style, the name body has been used instead. How can one speak of is and is not? How can you say that is and is not can be found within the true mind which defies duality? There is nothing dual about the true mind. It is absolute and not in the realm of opposites. And so how can you be so confused as to speak of an is and is not there? Sutra Manjushri, now I ask you, Take yourself as an example, Manjushri, is there still another Manjushri? Is there a Manjushri who is and a Manjushri who is not? Commentary. Now the Buddha asks Manjushri Bodhisattva a question. Manjushri, I now ask you, 
take yourself as an example, Manjushri. Is there still another Manjushri? Is there a Manjushri who is and a Manjushri who is not? You say this is Manjushri. That's what is meant by a Manjushri who is. Then, is there Manjushri who is not? What do you say? That is what the Buddha asked Manjushri Bodhisattva. And he wished to see what Manjushri Bodhisattva will answer. You should learn to ask questions like Manjushri Bodhisattva. Don't imitate Ananda's way of asking questions. Ananda's questions are really obtuse. Sutra, so it is. Won't honored one. I am truly Manjushri. There is no Manjushri who is. Why, if there was still another Manjushri who is Manjushri, there would be two Manjushris. But it is not that. Now I am not Manjushri. In fact, neither of the two characteristics is and is not exist. Commentary. So it is. Won't honored one. Manjushri Bodhisattva says, It is just as you explain it, Buddha. There is no Manjushri who is and no Manjushri who is not. There isn't any is or is not. I am truly Manjushri. I am the real Manjushri. There is no Manjushri who is. There isn't anyone beyond me that is Manjushri. There isn't anything else. I am just Manjushri. There isn't any is Manjushri or is not Manjushri. Why? Why do I say that? If you say this Manjushri is, then what Manjushri is not? If there were two Manjushris, then that would be acceptable. If there was still another Manjushri who is Manjushri, there would be two Manjushris. If there is an is, then there is an is not. And that becomes two Manjushris. But it is not that now I am not Manjushri. But it certainly isn't that I am not Manjushri today. There is a, a Manjushri, but there is no is Manjushri. In fact, neither of the two characteristics is and is not exist. In terms of myself, Manjushri, a particular person, the two aspects of is and is not do not exist. And to speak of one that is Manjushri and that one that is not Manjushri is incorrect. At that time, he caused everyone in the Great Assembly to understand that there isn't something that is the thing and something that is not the thing. The thing is the everlasting thing. There is no such thing as saying that things are the thing or that emptiness is the thing. The thing is the wonderfully pure bright substance of the nature of body. So you cannot set up is and is not with regard to it. So Sutra, the Buddha said, this is not only the case with the thing, the basic substance of wonderful body, but also with emptiness and mundane objects. Commentary, the more he explains, the more all encompassing this sutra becomes, not only is the seeing the basic substance of wonderful bright body, but emptiness and mundane dust are also. They are just like the seeing. The Buddha said, the wonderful brightness of the seeing is this way and so are emptiness and mundane objects. They are just as wonderful as the seeing. There is a no is and is not. It is not that things are the thing or that emptiness is the thing. Rather, emptiness and mundane things just uh, like the thing, the basic substance of the true mind. Later, the four elements of earth, water, fire, and wind are explained to be the wonderful true such in this nature of the treasury of the first come one. So the more this sutra is explained, the more wonderful it becomes. The more it is explained, the less you understand it. And so you say, since I can't understand it, I won't study it. If you don't study it, you will never understand it. You will never open your wisdom. Now, you are studying it. And so now you can open your wisdom. You can perceive that the mysterious wonder of the Buddha's doctrines is inexhaustible. So the Suragama Sutra is unsurpassed. Sutra, they are basically the projections or manifestations of the wonderful brightness of unsurpassed body, the pure, perfect, true mind. They are falsely taken to be form and emptiness as well as hearing and seeing. 
commentary. They're basically the projections or manifestations of a wonderful brightness of unsurpassed body. Basically, everything is a such a wonderful light, highest body, the enlightenment to the way, the pure, perfect, true mind. The true mind is clean. They are falsely taken to be form and emptiness as well as hearing and seeing. Originally, the basic substance is the pure true mind, but with the production of a single thought of false dust, mundane objects, one is turned around by form, that is, by things, and by emptiness. You are turned around by things. Earlier I said, if you can turn things around, you are the same as the first come one. Because there are false thoughts, one is turned around by form and emptiness. You also do not understand your hearing nature and your seeing nature. Why don't we understand? Because of the production of false thoughts. When one thought is wrong, thought after thought becomes wrong. There is a saying, in one false move, you lose the whole chess game. Likewise, because of one wrong thought, you recognize the false as true. You take false things to be the real one. Sutra, just as with the second moon, which one is the moon and which is not the moon? Manjushri, there is only one true moon, and within it there is not a moon that is or a moon that is not. Commentary, just as with the second moon, basically it is one moon, but if you look at it with the defective eyes, you see two moons. Which one is the moon and which is not the moon? Which moon is not the moon? Manjushri, there is only one true moon, and within it there is not a moon that is, or a moon that is not. When you have is and is not, you have relative dramas. But what is spoken of now is absolute. The basic nature of body is beyond opposites. Sutra, therefore, now as you contemplate the seeing and the mundane things together, all the things you disclose are called false thoughts. You cannot transcend is and is not from within them. Commentary, therefore, because of this, now as you contemplate the seeing and the mundane things together, all the things you disclose are called false thoughts. You contemplate your seeing and things, and you disclose all kinds of forms and appearances. They are all false thoughts. They appear because of your false thoughts. You cannot transcend is and is not from within them. Within emptiness, you cannot find something that is emptiness and something that is not emptiness. Emptiness is simply emptiness. How could there further be an emptiness that is and an emptiness that is not? Now, can you say of things that a thing is and is not? It is the same with a thing. You cannot say there is a thing that is a thing or is emptiness or that the thing is or is not seen. This will not work. In this, you cannot find an is or an is not. So try with the true essence, the wonderful, enlightened, bright nature you can get beyond trying to point out or not point out. Commentary with the true essence, the genuine seeing essence, the wonderful, enlightened, bright nature, the such a wonderful, inconceivable, bright nature you can get beyond trying to point out or not point out. The bright nature can teach you to get beyond trying to pinpoint things as being or not being. You felt that your doctrine was correct when you said that the thing is a thing and then you said the thing is not a thing. But ultimately, is it a thing or isn't it? The Buddha is asking Ananda. Fundamentally, there is no such distinction of is and is not. Your doctrine was wrong. You tried to point to things as is or is not, but basically it cannot be done. It is a complete mistake, mistake to try. But now you can get beyond that.